Oh. Oh, look how cool that is. You can see how these different elements have been replaced over time. Geologically, it's super interesting. Oh, most definitely. We have a whole story that's being told here. Hey everyone, welcome back to another unboxing. I'm Rebecca, we've got Brittany here. She's our in-house geologist, and we are gonna do another gemologist versus geologist episode. So I don't know what they're gonna give us today, do you know? No, I have no idea. Thank you. You're welcome. We each have a clue? Oh. Okay, we've been told that these go together. Why tell your story with words when you can tell it with colors? Mmm, I like that. Oh, ours look drastically different. Oh, I love that one. Okay, let's talk about this. So, this is tourmaline. Yeah! Tourmaline is a very complex mineral. Geologically and gemologically, it's super interesting. Oh, most definitely. As you can see, most if not all of these tourmalines aren't just one color, they're multiple colors. This tourmaline is a very deep, rich, raspberry, pinkish red color with zoning of yellow and green. That one is what I refer to as a cotton candy tourmaline. It has this nice pastel pink and blue. And this one's slightly more bluish, and then this is a little bit more green, but they definitely have both pink coloration here. Tourmaline is a complex borosilicate material that has a lot of chemical replacements going on in its structure. It's part of an isomorphous series. We'll show the chemical formula for you because it's super complex. The coloring does come from trace elements. The main one is iron, specifically iron two, but there's others most commonly being chromium, manganese, and a little bit of titanium sometimes. You're gonna get a lot of different types of zoning. A very popular variety of tourmaline is called watermelon tourmaline. It has an interior, this, this pinkish red, and this exterior of green. The color zones are from the interior to the exterior, whereas this, you have zones of color along the length of the crystals. So let's talk about geologically how that happens. A lot of the gem varieties of tourmaline forms in pegmatites. It's pretty much when a body of magma doesn't reach their surface yet and it solidifies, but it takes a while. The oxygen doesn't cool it as quickly, and so the minerals and the elements that are within this magma have a longer time to grow, which means that they'll grow a lot larger. They form in late stage hydrothermal deposits, so you'll often hear tourmaline called the trash can of minerals. A lot of the formation occurs with somewhat of like the, the leftovers a little bit. It's like a kitchen sink cookie. You throw like all of these random ingredients that you have left at your house. So you have all of these elements in these pegmatites during the mineral formation it kind of uses up each of these elements and so you get a wide variety of inclusions, of colors. You get these long, thin prismatic crystals. Nicely said. <laughs> I think this piece is a perfect example that kind of tells the story, how tourmaline can often grow. Manganese being the cause of color for pinks and reds. You have iron, titanium for yellows and greens. Colorless tourmaline is tourmaline that doesn't have any trace impurities. You can see how these different elements have been replaced over time as the mineral has grown. Oh, oh, look how cool that is. You see that? Oh, yeah, I do. There is a very, very thin layer of pink, again, after the colorless. So something happened there. Somewhere, <laughs> manganese decided to enter the chat again, and, but then it quickly disappeared. And then you have the green, which is when iron likely entered the equation. So you have a whole story that's being told here. There's a lot of tourmalines that form as accessory minerals. We have a couple here that have the matrix with it. So we have this tourmaline and this feldspar rock. Some of the colors can be enhanced by irradiation, whether that's natural or man-made. This is a potassium feldspar. Potassium does have its own radiation to it, even though it's pretty weak. That natural radiation would help this watermelon and tourmaline to have more vibrant colors than in a different matrix. And then we have another one here in mica, which is pretty, pretty cool. This one grew actually quite large in this mica. Okay. Actually, it's a cake shape, yeah. 
which is <laughs> kind of cool. Tourmaline is pretty easy to identify just visually. It most often has vertical striations along the length of the C-axis. Tourmaline forms in the trigonal crystal system. Most of them will be three or six sided. So I've heard that we have an even bigger tourmaline slice. Oh my goodness, look at the triangle. You know, a triangle is my favorite shape. Is it really? It is. Let's get a flashlight. So in the interior, we're seeing a dark green surrounded by this really nice purple. And then it's actually colorless for a uh, split second there. Yeah, and then it just goes back to just all of color throughout the entire slice. Can you believe how big the mineral specimen must have been for this to come from it? It'd have to be pretty large, maybe the size of a leg. Tourmaline has two really interesting properties. It's piezoelectric and it's pyroelectric. One result of its electric charge is it tends to collect a lot of dust. <laughs> and I just, it's like, I just wiped my fingers across and uh, it's like, we're cleaning off the counter there. It's very dusty. It's very dusty. <laughs> this slice, I believe, is a type of liticotite, specifically because of the triangular color zoning that's going on in this slice. As we mentioned earlier, tourmaline is actually a group of minerals, and so you have different varieties. Elbite is the most common, so watermelon tourmaline, rubellite, indicolite, pariba, those are all types of elbite tourmaline. Liticotite is another type. It's named after Richard Liticote, who was a gemologist, so he's very well known in the industry. If you had something named after you, what would it be? I would want it to have like a very interesting element that you wouldn't immediately know from the get-go. I think of like chrome tourmaline, for example. Most green is colored by iron, titanium, but you know, surprise, colored by chromium. I would want to have like a little nugget about me that was, you know, plot twist. <laughs> Love a good plot twist. Ooh. One, two, three. <laughs> there are so many of them. Oh wow, you have a lot in your box this time. These are a bunch of faceted gems. So this is a great way to show the different colors that tourmaline comes in. There's a variety called chrome tourmaline and it's colored by chromium or vanadium. So this is a very rich green. I mean, look, that is like, when you think of pure green, this is almost pure green. It's a quantum cut, so you have a lot of different display of color. That one's amazing. In the industry, we use a lot of trade names for different varieties. This blue or greenish blue variety of tourmaline, it's an albite tourmaline, is called indicolite. I think it's a really cool turquoise, bluish green color. Indicolite is colored by iron too. These are actually pieces of and and this really large piece of quartz that's just kind of out here. <laughs> I love that. Oh, if you look here, there's actually one of the tourmalines just going straight oh, yeah. through the quartz. That is really cool. We've got some pink tourmaline. Manganese is the coloring agent for pinks and reds, typically more manganese three plus ions. This is a little bit over 11 carats. It's an untreated yellow tourmaline from Afghanistan. And this yellow is colored by manganese two plus. One of the most famous gemstones is called Pariba Tourmaline. It has one of the highest prices per carat of all the gemstones. We've talked about cause of color. Blue gemstones typically colored by iron, but Pariba Tourmaline is blue or green tourmaline colored by copper and gold. It was founded in Brazil in 1989, and then it was quickly mined out. And so we have this cabochon, it's an oval cabochon that has this electric blue color. This is from the Pariba state in Brazil. People have different perspectives in the gem industry on what constitutes a Pariba tourmaline. There are some people who say that Pariba tourmaline is a term that can only be used for tourmaline from the Pariba state. Technically, you are allowed to call something Pariba tourmaline if it is colored by copper, regardless of locality. This gemstone, this is from Mozambique, and it's colored by copper. And so technically, this is a Pariba tourmaline. I prefer to say Pariba-like tourmaline to indicate, you know, disclosure is really important in the gemstone industry. The price difference between uh, Cuprian, which is sometimes what they call it from 
Brazil versus a Cuprian tourmaline from Mozambique or Nigeria is another locality is uh, dramatic. But nonetheless, the gems are beautiful. So we love having this one in the collection. I have some lovely tourmaline specimens here. We have this very large piece of shoral right here and it is opaque. Most other tourmalines will have some sort of transparency or translucency to them, but not shoral. It is just as dark as can be. Shoral is the most common type of tourmaline. It's colored by titanium, iron, and sometimes manganese. So there's a lot of trace elements going on to make this lovely black tourmaline. Looking at this piece, it's actually more straight in its triangular prism than most tourmalines. With other tourmalines, a lot of its trigonal shape is convex, kind of like curved around the edges. This dravite here, which is also pretty opaque, but it has some translucency to it. If I was just like looking at it for a split second, I would almost probably confuse it with a type of garnet. But nope, you can easily see the hexagonal habit that's going on with this piece. You can see the edge development see there their secondary phases mm -hmm. where you have like additional growth there's about I believe 32 varieties of tourmaline dravite is its own unique variety and then of course we have these two rubellite crystals now, these are from Madagascar rubellite is colored by manganese 2 plus and 3 plus I love the color of this there are a lot of different red gemstones but what I love about rubellite is it's just this particular color of red. My favorite have just the right amount of pink and purple and red. It just has such a richness to it. Any gemstone not in the cubic crystal system is going to have some sort of pleochroism, whether it's mild or strong. And so for tourmaline, when you're looking down the length of the crystal or down the long end of the C-axis, tourmaline is generally a lot darker. When you're looking perpendicular, so this direction, it's lighter. So if you had a really light tourmaline and you wanted your faceted gem to be darker, a lapidary would typically cut so that the face up of the fasted gem is from the long end of the crystal. If it's a really dark crystal and we need the fasted gem to be a lighter color, then a lapidary would typically facet the gemstone so that the table or the face up color is from the side of the crystal. And some people actually do it on an angle. If they want pleochroic colors visible in the face up direction or on the table, so, very cool element of tourmaline. Ooh. Oh, cool. So these are chatoyant or cat's eye tourmalines. As we mentioned earlier, tourmaline often forms in hydrothermal deposits. So you have this hot fluid that's mineral rich. As a result, liquid often gets trapped. There are inclusions that are called trichites that are thin tubular types of inclusions. And under the microscope, you can often see liquid or gases inside of them. So you have enough of these tubular inclusions running parallel in the same direction, and if the gem is cut in cabochon, you can sometimes create a chatoyant effect or a cat's eye. Cool thing about cat's eye tourmaline is you can have this cat's eye or this line running between two different colors. So you've got a few different visual effects going on here. And I, I love these, I think they're really cool. Oh no, absolutely. They just look like tiny pieces of candy. Researchers in Japan discovered that tourmaline has a constant electric charge. So tourmaline is often called the electric stone and it possesses two properties, piezoelectricity and pyroelectricity. So piezoelectricity is when mechanical stress is applied to it and it produces a charge. Pyroelectricity is when heat is applied to it and it produces a charge. So you can actually create positive and negative ends of tourmaline. They can act as magnets. And so we are going to do a little bit of an experiment to see if we can create some charge out of a tourmaline. Our team has created some ashes for us. I'm gonna rub the tourmaline to create some heat. It doesn't require a ton. Brittany is gonna lay out some ashes on the table and then we're gonna put the tourmaline in the ashes and see if we can repel or attract them. Oh my gosh, it's stuck. Did you see that stick? Maybe this is a topic of further study. We'll get back to you.
Tourmaline is such an interesting group of minerals. They can be found all over the world, of course, in Brazil, places like Mozambique, Madagascar, Nigeria. Also here in the United States, this piece is in Smoky Quartz. It's actually from Maine. The tourmaline in the feldspar is from California. California, right outside of San Diego, is a very important locality for tourmaline. And so you can find it in all sorts of places throughout the world. And it's, it's just one of my favorite gemstones. But as you know, Brittany, we have to take a closer look. We have to pick a favorite on the table. Uh, do you want to go first? Oh boy. I think I'm actually going to go with this piece of shoral. I like this one, one, because of its opacity. It's just so dark, but also it just kind of matches my shirt a little bit. So I actually am going to choose the cotton candy tourmaline. I think it's just so bright and cheery, and it's just a happy material. So take a closer look. I have a parcel that I want to show you. I purchased this myself, but you guys can purchase ones like these as well. I thought this would be a great start to my own tourmaline collection. Look at all those colors. Lots of different colors. There's this really big piece I was able to see where it has like this weird color zoning to it. Really, really, really beautiful pieces. We'll put the links in the description for you guys to check those out so you can get one for yourself. Let us know what your favorite variety of tourmaline is and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. See you next time.